So for the last couple of days, I have been using the U-Perfect X Mini Lap Dock about as much as I possibly can in conjunction with my Samsung Galaxy Z Fold 4, which basically allows this thing to uh, run on this little lap dock in dex mode. If you don't know exactly what I'm talking about here, this is what this thing is. A lap dock is basically a little laptop that has no operating system of its own installed on board. And what you do is you plug in something like a Samsung phone with DeX or a Motorola phone with their desktop mode or whatever it is you want to run on here. And then this thing takes over. It gives you additional I.O. It gives you a trackpad, a keyboard, a bigger screen and presumably bigger speakers as well. We'll get to that in a minute. And then you can kind of continue your workflow on uh, this lap dock instead. As you can see here, this thing is $299. Luckily, this thing does have a 1080p touchscreen and a 360 hinge. You can fold it around into sort of a giant tablet at that point. It also has a really large, almost 11,000 milliamp hour battery. And like I said, I've been using it for the last couple of days. And in this video, I'm gonna give you my review, my thoughts about uh, you know what I think about this device. Let's really quickly go over the device. I did have an unboxing and a first impressions where I've already done this, but I'll do it again here. It's relatively small, but it's not super lightweight. Um, on one side here, you have DCN, and it does actually uh, use a barrel charging uh, plug. Wish it was charging over USB-C. That would be a whole lot better, but it is what it is. You've got a USB-A, HDMI, a USB-C, which is where you're going to plug your phone in. HDMI, you can plug in you know, whatever you wanted to use. This is basically an external monitor, if that's the way that you want to go. On the other side, you have a headphone jack, another USB-A, and a micro SD card slot, as well as uh, the power button. Micro SD is there, power button is there. If you open the thing up, you'll see that there is a decently large uh, keyboard, as well as a fairly large trackpad, which does click uh, down there at the bottom, and then uh, downward firing speakers here on the bottom. So in terms of how this thing works, it's relatively simple. So what you're gonna do, you're gonna hold down your power button for about four seconds to turn it on. It should then power up. At that point, you're going to plug in a USB-C cable, which is included on one side, and then plug in your phone on the other. It's gonna start charging your phone, and then you're going to load into, uh, in this instance, Samsung DeX, which is a desktop type environment powered by your Samsung device. Okay, so what is the experience like once you are in here? So let's talk about the trackpad first. It's pretty decent. It is very, very sensitive to the point that I actually had to go into the settings and turn down the sensitivity. In your DeX settings, you're supposed to be able to set things like, you know, okay, so three finger tap to show the app screen. When I do a three finger tap, it launches my text messaging app every single time, no matter what I set it to. Tap with four fingers, let's set it to show the app screen. Four finger tap, and that does absolutely nothing. So there's something broken about the trackpad in regard to these touchpad gestures. There is one other problem that I've been having with the trackpad though, and I'll see if I can demonstrate this. So let's open up Edge, and we'll go to my website. So by default, let's see here. Uh, two fingers swipe up, scrolls down, and down scrolls up. So it's basically mimicking like a touch screen, right? So down and up, down and up. Okay, well, let's say you're not used to that and you actually want to change that. Well, you can go into DeX, and this is not really a, so much a problem with this thing as it is a problem with DeX, perhaps. But if you go into your settings here, and let's say you want to reverse that. So now I've reversed it in the settings here. Now I've changed it from down scrolls down to down scrolls up. Let's go back into the web browser and nothing's changed. It is exactly the same as before. That setting seems to just not do anything. So that's something that has bothered me a little bit because I'm still used to the other way around. So that's kind of been a little bit of a trouble. I've also had weird issues where sort of clicking and doing things on the side over here will occasionally make the window shrink down into that view. And again, that's probably more of a DeX problem than this. Thing, but I'm not really sure exactly what's going on there. You may have noticed that there's actually a little piece of tape there over the indicator lights. And the reason for that is the entire time that this thing is on, that light will be shining. And it is brighter than the sun. And it is super, super frustrating and annoying. 
So I have it covered up there because of that. Let's flip the thing around into tablet mode so that you can actually see that and we'll tilt it so that we get rid of some of that glare. The touch screen is kind of hit or miss for me. So let's go back into our web browser here. And you can see that most of the time scrolling around is okay. You will have times though when things do act a little bit weird and you miss some swipes and some taps. It's not all the time, just kind of here and there. Speaking a bit more about this screen, probably my biggest problem with it is even though I have pumped up the saturation, things just don't quite look right. There's also sort of a, a weird graininess on the screen. It's kind of difficult to describe. It almost looks like there's a film on the screen that I needed to pull off, but there is not any such film. So the screen is honestly kind of one of the weaker aspects of the device. It's really not a super impressive screen. Some things being on it look okay. Other things are, are really not so hot. What about for the keyboard? I actually think that the keyboard is generally okay. The only problem I've had is that the space bar is really narrow. And sometimes I think I'm hitting just the edge of it. And by virtue of doing that, I'm occasionally missing a space bar press. I'm typing and I'm not actually hitting the space bar. I might, I might even be hitting the alt button for all I know. So that might just be kind of me not being used to the keyboard yet, but I have occasionally missed a space press. So I just showed off tablet mode a second ago. You also have the ability to do sort of a tint mode, right? So you could pick the thing up and put it down like this. But the biggest problem with that is there's no accelerometer. So it's not going to know to rotate. You would actually have to do that manually and you would do that using the function keys and these buttons up here. There's like a little menu that you can go through to, to tweak some things and to rotate the screen. That would have to be done, like I said, manually. Another aspect that is definitely a little bit on the weak side are the speakers. I'm going to give you two different sort of sound tests here. Let's go into YouTube music and let's play Hook by Blues Traveler. And we're going to crank the volume up because right now the, the sound should be coming out of my Z Fold 4. And as you can probably hear, that sounds uh, pretty good because the Z Fold 4's speakers are very, very strong. Let's go back into our settings here. Let's go into decks and let's toggle it so that now the sound should be coming out of this. Now we have to actually unplug it and plug it back in and basically restart decks for that to take effect. And now let's open YouTube Music back up again and let's start that song over. And this is gonna be volume all the way up on the device and volume all the way up in the uh, software. And let's start this thing over and let's see what you guys think. It is a night and day difference. The internal speakers in this thing are just really not great at all. I would recommend 10 out of 10 times you should be going into your settings. If it's, I think it's by default going to come out of your phone, almost whatever phone you have is going to sound better than this. Granted, the Z Fold has fantastic speakers, so we're kind of you know in, a, in an advantageous position when it comes to that, but the speakers are, are really quite weak. So what are some use cases for something like this, right? So basically the idea would be that you've got your, your, your really nice phone and you don't have a laptop. So you spend $300 and get this thing and there's continuation of your workflow, right? All your apps are logged in here, so they're logged in here. You can take everything with you. One thing I've been doing is using OneNote to take notes for things like this very review. And you can see here how that will work. It's the same exact application that I will be using on both. Sometimes I would take some notes here. Sometimes I would take some notes on this thing. And of course, that's really, really useful. Maybe you want to use it to watch some video content. Well, with a decent set of headphones, which there is a headphone jack or your phone speakers or Bluetooth earbuds, whatever you want to use, it is a large enough screen. And while the screen is not fantastic, it's good enough to get by and it's going to be an okay viewing experience. So it is definitely a larger screen than what you have on your phone. But there's also another use case, right? What about gaming? So you've got a pretty powerful phone there. So you could just as easily launch a game, something like PUBG Mobile. In that instance, you would want to make sure that your phone is sort of sitting in a position where you're going to get stereo sound. I guess that would be true uh, for a, a movie or TV watching experience as well. 
but you could totally play a game like this and it would be like playing on a really big tablet of course most games are not going to support WASD mouse and keyboard controls even though you do have them you're going to be using the touch screen as if it's a phone still a couple more kind of more dex related issues are are this let's say you're you, you want to keep your phone turned off right well there's a weird thing that happens anytime we are in a text field we're interacting with a text field you'll notice something uh, that my phone screen will turn on and be blurred like this. This is just something that happens. And then whenever you're done typing, your phone is just awake again. So that's going to be a little bit annoying. Another big problem is just the fact that Android apps just don't look that great on a giant screen like this. Hopefully more apps are going to be updated with Android 12L coming to be better on large screens. But for now, a lot of apps kind of behave like Twitter, and that is to say they're terrible. You just have giant really wide you can't even see the whole image it's a terrible experience so i would recommend using uh, a web app for twitter and just using their website because that's going to be a far better experience for now but again that's more of a dex problem than it is a problem with this laptop i honestly think though that is kind of a microcosm of this device there are some things that are good but there's almost always a caveat you got a touch screen but the sensitivity is a little bit not that great. It's a larger screen than on your phone, but it's going to be a worse screen than what is on your phone. Yeah, you've got some speakers, but they're not very good. You've got a big keyboard, but it is quite small. So these are all little compromises. Maybe the small keyboard doesn't bother you. Maybe the screen doesn't bother you. Maybe you're not going to use the touchscreen. This is all stuff you have to kind of decide for yourself. For me, at the end of the day, if this is the primary thing I want this device for, to use it as a laptop with something like Dex, I'm going to have a hard time not thinking I should just go buy a $200 Chromebook that's probably going to give me a very similar experience because I can run my Android apps on that as well. And it's going to probably have a better trackpad. It's probably have a better desktop experience, probably a better touchscreen as well. And it might even be cheaper. Now, if you're going to use it for multiple things, right, that's where things start to get interesting. If you want this thing to use with Dex, but you're also going to use it with your Steam Deck, which is off camera, maybe you want to plug your Nintendo Switch into it, use it as an external monitor. Now you start to find some more utility. I think if you're just wanting to use it as a laptop replacement because you have a Samsung phone, $300 is a bit of a stretch for that because you can get a better laptop for less than $300. But as something that can be more universal, that can be that external display and that you can use with your deck, use with your Switch, use with whatever you want with an HDMI cable or a C cable, then you start to have a bit more utility and it starts to make a bit more sense. If I were going to rank this thing somewhere between like awful, bad, okay good great and like amazing i'd probably put it in the okay range it's not bad it's not awful for sure but it's not something that i'm gonna say like man this is a fantastic device i wish it was a little bit cheaper i wish it charged over USB-C. those two things would really really help this out a lot the build quality is is pretty good there's just too many compromises for me to be able to say this is a great or even a really good device if you enjoyed this review keep in mind i'm going to be doing a review very soon of using this thing with the steam deck which i actually think might be better than using it for decks i know most people are going to buy this thing for decks hold on because i'm telling you i played around with this on my steam deck and it was quite an interesting experience i actually think that's going to be kind of the killer feature for this thing so Stay tuned for that video coming up very soon. Maybe subscribe so that you don't miss it. I will see you on the next one. And until next time, stay nerdy, my friends.